Good morning. Morning, everybody. Let me turn my volume up. Y'all probably can't hear me. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm gonna let a lot of y'all come in. Good morning, I'm good. Thank you for asking, how are you? Good morning. All y'all beautiful people, good morning. This is, um, Oh, thank you guys. I want, this was on my, y'all saw, if you've been to my page already this morning, you saw I posted El Hajj Malik Shabazz or Malcolm X. It's his birthday. It's our ancestor's birthday. He was a, he's a divine ancestor, divine, divine ancestor. He came here, he did his work. He got on up out of here. Um... Forgiveness. We like to say that word a lot. We like to talk about how we forgive people, forgive people. I actually learned what forgiveness was when I was about, I said I was 30. It took me 30 years on this earth to actually understand forgiveness and what it entailed and what it means. It's a radical it's a radical thing. Forgiveness is radical. It's 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 beyond. It's out there. It's 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 some. It's on a scale of um, emotional wellness. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane because everything in our human mind makeup. It does not tell us to do that. It goes totally against our humanity. It goes against who we are naturally. Like forgiveness is not a natural concept for humans. It's just not. We are not forgiving. That's not what we do. We are begrudging. We are, um, what do you call that when you, uh, revengeful. We're vengeful, <laughs> but forgiving, no ma'am. That is not something we do naturally. That is not in our natural makeup. That is extraordinary shit. That's some beyond shit. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you got the chance to look at that uh, video of Malcolm X and him talking about, he was talking about healing, right? And in the in the video, he said, he doesn't believe in progress and he was talking about the United States because they won't even admit they'll take the knife out six inches and say that's progress. They'll take the knife out and say that's progress, but they won't even admit that they had the knife in the first place. It's not progress until you admit that you had a wound, that you wounded someone until you admit that you are wounded or that you have wounded another person you are not even in the realm of forgiveness. You're not even in the realm. If you're just saying, oh, okay, I'm sorry, and you want forgiveness, and you can't say, I'm sorry for saying this about you. I'm sorry for trying to hurt you in this way. I'm sorry for actually hurting you in this way. I'm sorry for really trying to damage your character, your person, like really trying to harm you. And I learned this lesson at 30 because, and I'm, this is real shit. Like, I'm a real person. I did real shit in my life. I had two good friends. They, in my head, they were my best friends. And they had a relationship. They were dating. And me and the other friend, one of the friends, had a very close relationship. And it crossed a boundary. We told the other friend, because, you know, guilt, shame, shit happens. And she went off, of course. And I valued that friendship. I valued that friendship. So I had to sit in my shit. I had to sit in how I showed up. And I had to apologize for how I showed up. Like, really apologize. Like, own it. Like, I was fake. I was inauthentic. 
I harmed you. I hurt you. I stepped on your spirit. I stepped on your person. I lied to you in your face. I turned my back on you and what I said I was, I meant to you and what I was standing for in our relationship. And then it was up to her. It was her choice. It was her choice for her to forgive me and the other person who harmed her. It was her choice. I couldn't ask for her forgiveness. A lot of times we think we're supposed to ask for something in order um, for it to happen, right? Every time I've been injured by someone and they've asked for my forgiveness before I knew what forgiveness was and I said, yes, I didn't forgive them. I did not forgive their ass. No, I did not. Mm -mm. No, I was just like trying to get them out of my face. Because I couldn't deal with the fact that they had harmed me in the way that they did. Forgiveness is a, a, a totality of radical authenticity. Radical self-love. Radical love for the other. You have to be able to lay it all bare. Put it all on the, you know, put it all out there. In order to even get to the realm of forgiveness. We want forgiveness without even bearing any parts of our souls. And it's because we learned this. This is a learned behavior. We live in a, a culture that uh, promotes oppression. Mm -hmm. It promotes oppression. And it promotes suppression. So we suppress our feelings and we oppress others. We suppress ourselves and we oppress others. And then we have relationships. We have relationships which, re, you know, we re, re need us to be authentic and clear and present and aware. And it's hard because we have this natural oppression need to oppress each other. And this natural need to suppress who we actually are in the world as we're suppressing ourselves and oppressing each other and we're not showing up authentically or clear we're harming ourselves and we're harming others right and this is where forgiveness comes into play because if we're not ourselves we're not our full selves and we're not allowing others to be their full selves we're going to get some wires crossed shit is going to get a little meshed right it's going to get a little crazy in here. Hey, y'all. So the, this is why forgiveness is like radical. It's, it's almost an antithesis to who we are as human beings because our human beings nature is to preserve itself. Right? Your, your nature is to take care of you and to make sure you are here. So forgiveness goes against that. Forgiveness... In, in our minds, it does. It doesn't actually, but in our minds, in our makeup, it goes against the natural order of securing ourselves. Forgiveness goes against the natural order of securing ourselves. We have to learn to take leaps of insecurity, of discomfort, of... fearlessness you know like really and maybe you don't be fearless but be fear have, be scared and do it anyway in order to get to the radical realm of forgiveness we have to be able to jump out there and be naked in the room a lot of us don't want to be naked in the room a lot of us want to come in the room with people who are naked and have armor and guns and knives and words and all types of shit that we can do have to harm other people but we want to be in the room. When you're in a relationship with someone else, in deep relationship with someone else, forgiveness is going to come up a lot. Forgiveness is going to come up often, almost daily. Hi, baby. That's my husband. Forgiveness is going to come up daily. It's going to come up all the time. And how do you get through that? It's being authentic. 
being clear, being present, being willing to say the shit that might not feel comfortable or good, being willing to release your idea of how things are supposed to be. Relationships that last long have lots of moments of forgiveness. Real forgiveness, not just I forgive you and then I'm holding this grudge and I'm going to be mad at you for X, Y, Z amount of time until I get you back. Forgiveness for me has shown up in allowing people who I've harmed to tell me and to dictate how I get to show up in their life if I get to show up in their life after I've harmed them. Forgiveness for me has allowed me to be honest and clear and direct with people who have harmed me and create boundaries, create uh, spaces where we can start over and grow together in new and different ways. Because once we get to a point where we have harmed each other or you have harmed me or I have harmed you, our relationship, that relationship has ended. That is done. We are on a new relationship. We are in a new understanding of each other. We are in a new arrival here. We are starting over. The old rules do not apply. We have to get at the round table and say, hey, so this happened, right? And this made me feel this way. And then you felt this way. And this is why you did this thing. And this is how I feel about you doing this thing. And in the future, if we're going to continue to communicate and commune and connect, this is what I expect. And that's a really what happens, right? For the Most of the times when we are on a forgiveness journey with someone, we haven't set up proper boundaries. And why haven't we set up proper boundaries? Again, because we live in a society where we think it's normal to suppress other people, ourselves, and to oppress other people. It is our norm. Our norm is suppression and oppression. It is our norm. So when we see someone being themselves and being comfortable in their skin, we, supp we oppress them. When we feel comfortable in our skins, we suppress it. We push it down. No way I'm supposed to feel that. I'm supposed to acknowledge that. I'm supposed to be okay with myself being that way because society says X, Y, Z is acceptable. And this doesn't fit that societal norm. So I have to suppress this thing. And what does that cause? All types of things. Like we can get into the health problems that it'll cause we can get into the mental uh health problems that it'll, it'll cause but outwardly what it initially causes is you oppressing other people because you can't be radically yourself you you can't live in your authenticity which allows you to create situations where you'll need forgiveness often You'll need forgiveness often and you, or you'll be needing to forgive other people often because you cannot be yourself and you don't allow other people to be yourself, be themselves. And forgiveness takes time. I know we see a lot of quick and handy forgivenesses going out in this world that we live in, but forgiveness is a, time, is a, a longevity thing. It's a, it's a thing of work. Forgiveness is about uh, working together and making sure that we understand each other's boundaries. Even with myself, when I am working on forgiveness with myself, I have boundaries with myself. When I have done something that is harmful to me or put myself in a situation that I knew was harmful, but I wanted X, Y, Z, I was looking at this long-term outcome instead of the upfront uh, initial issue that would show up for me. And I'm like, damn, I, you know, I'm, I, I shouldn't have did that. I have to put boundaries in place for myself for how I speak to myself, how I deal with myself, how I engage myself, and how I allow myself to engage with others. Because when we are harming ourselves and we are hurting ourselves, we are definitely prone to hurting other people. 
And it, this level of self-awareness is really only available through your authentic expression, through your willingness to be honest with yourself. That's really all it comes down to is when you are alone, can you say who you are? I know in my life, I've been a liar. I've been a cheater. I've stolen things. I've, I've, I've been a bully. Um, trying to think of all the things that I've been that are not who I am, but I have been these things. That's literally like, those are my, those are my go-to pet peeves. <laughs> But yeah, the, I've been those things. So when I'm put in a position or when I put myself in a position where those behaviors can come up, I have to be clear. Hey, you know you can be a bully when people show up certain kinds of way. Hey, you know you can be a cheater or a liar when you're put in this situation or you put yourself in this situation. Hey, you know this about yourself. So... How are you going to hold yourself accountable? It's not, a, you know, a, you know, like, how are you going to hold yourself accountable in this situation? Because you can only avoid situations for so long, right? When you're working on healing. And when you're working on healing, the things that you're healing from are going to show up. They're going to be in your face. Because you said, you said you want to heal them. So, universe, the God, your ancestors, whoever you believe in. It's going to serve you a nice big old plate of healing and say, here you go, boo. Here you go, baby girl. Here you go, baby boy. Eat it up. We know you can do it. And here's the thing. It's okay if you fail. It's okay if you don't catch that cycle, that healing cycle, that loop that's coming around that's saying that you get this behavior and you understand this is behavior is a part of your reality, but it doesn't have to be that you don't have to choose it. You don't have to choose it, right? We have choice. We have choice. You can choose the behaviors that you engage and indulge in. So if I know that in the past, I'm a liar, I have been a liar. I know the reasons why I've been a liar. I grew up in foster care. I wanted my life to be better than it was. So I started developing us a, a, a lying because I, I wanted to, to have a pretty life and I didn't have one. So when I know that that comes up for me, when someone asks me something about my life and, I don't, and it's a part of my life that I don't think is as glamorous or as bright and beautiful as I think it should be, I know that I have a difficulty telling the truth in that part of my life. So I have to be very blunt, very honest. No, that's not how shit is. That's why you don't see me on here wearing makeup and buying $2 billion outfits and all that shit because that's not my life. I'm a very simple person. That's not who I am. It's a lie. It, it would be a lie. If I got on here every day dressed up, it would be a lie. That's not who I am. It's not who I core, who I am at my core. That would be a facade. So I cannot do that. I can't get on here every day. You are not going to see a picture of me every day looking like I got a million dollars. Because that's a lie. I would not do that. Because that would be feeding the internal part of myself that needs lies in order to survive. The part of myself that grew up in foster care. That's a filter, baby. That's not my skin. <laughs> Thank you, though. Uh, <laughs> that, that grew up in foster care and needed to protect myself from the outside world and have my life look a certain kind of way because I didn't have a mom and I didn't have a dad and, I, and my brothers and my sisters were strewn all through the system and we didn't see each other every day. So I needed that perfect picture thing that I saw on TV because it seemed to me that everyone else had it except for us little unfortunates in foster care. So I do my best. I do my best. To be as honest on my page as I can be. I don't front for Instagram. Because I know that's a mindset for me. I don't know about what everybody else is doing. I don't, I, and I don't care what everybody else is doing. <laughs> that's the other thing. For me. It will be a front. And it would feed something in my psyche. That used to believe that I wasn't enough. And needed the facade in order 
to matter. And I don't need that facade. Um, I love the life that I have created for myself. I literally came from nothing. I literally came from nothing. No mama, no daddy. So to have successfully had careers, been to college, done my life, created a whole nother alternative life to the life that I thought I was supposed to have, which is the, the whole picket fence, house, kids, cars, and then transaction from that life to the life of a more simpler life that actually fits who I am and works with who I am. It's more honest, more in sync with who I am. I have lots of amazing, beautiful things happen to me every day. I don't need to make it up for Instagram. So that that that's where I where I go when I'm on my feed and you people see me and they're like, oh, you're just so regular. I am regular. There is nothing um, extraordinary about me except for the fact that I am here and I'm aware of that I'm here, just like you. That's it. And when we get to those those bottom those deep down reasons why we are the way we are. That's when we can do the radical radical forgiveness for ourselves and have hold space for our own journeys. And this is why forgiveness will come up in your space and you will be able to manage it in ways that is useful and helpful to everyone around. And you will be able to maintain your relationships. We did not come here to be alone. We did not come here to be alone. I know there's a lot of um, school of thought on the internet. Oh, you could just dispose of people when they do something that you don't like, blah, 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 trash him, trash her, they trash. That's not realistic. There are 8 billion people in the world, I believe. How the fuck do you think you're going to be here by yourself and that's going to make sense? We all came here to be collectively together in a tribe and we all have different tribes. We're very tribal. Humans are very tribal. You know, minus, in y'all, in a lot of people heads, tribal means huts and dirt and all that. We still, we live in huts. They're called apartments and houses. We're very tribal. Yes, minimalism. Hi, Zasiri. Satnam, sis. So, yeah, we're, we're very tribal and we need each other. And that's why forgiveness is an important thing that we have to learn. We have to learn how to show up on the other side of our brains, which tells us this is insane. This doesn't make sense. Don't do that. It tells you that because it's trying to make you feel like you need to survive. Like if you go past the point of t worrying about yourself, then you're going to lose something. The, if I see you as me, how can I lose? If I'm willing to see you as I see myself, how can I lose by loving you? There is no loss. There's only perceived loss. There's only perceived disconnection. There's only perceived so many things. And that's a whole nother conversation. But... We are here for each other. And so forgiveness is something that we get to learn and get to incorporate in our daily lives. And the first thing I say is start with learning how to forgive yourself for not being all the things that you thought you should be or the things that you think society thinks you should be or your mom or your dad thinks you should be or whoever thinks you should be. Have that honest conversation with yourself first. Confront yourself and give yourself the radical forgiveness that is necessary for you to be authentic. So we can stop this suppressing ourselves and oppressing others cycle that we are really married to. We're not even stuck in it. We're married to it. It is our water. We drink it. I get on this app and I see so many people trying to 
figure out their way and they're finding their freedom in different lanes. Some of it's body positivity, some of it's dance, some of it's um, spoken word, some of it's music. And I, in, 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 in I look in the comments, and I, I don't know why I do this to myself, but I do. I look in the comments and I see so many mean things. And it's just like, you could just scroll past. That person is having an experience and they're sharing it because they feel good enough to share. They've gotten, they built themselves up to this point where they feel good enough to share their experience. The least you could do is just scroll past if you don't enjoy their experience. That's all we're doing on this app. We're just scrolling through people's lives and their experiences. And we're connecting and saying, do I enjoy this experience? Or do I not enjoy this experience? That's it. The rest of it. All right, guys. I'm done. I'm about to hop off here and do my yoga practice. Um... And thank you guys for hanging out with me this morning. Uh, if you have any questions or thoughts you want to share, please do. Oh, someone said, and what brought you or brings you away from those things? I think they were talking about uh, materialism. It's not me. Materialism doesn't fit who I am. I've had everything. I've had two houses, two cars. I've had all that shit. I've done that life. I did it and it was exhausting as fuck. I felt like I was on a damn IV. You ever, you know what I'm saying? When you go to the hospital and you get an IV and you need something to, to pump you up. Like I was exhausted all the time trying to fit into this narrative of this successful black woman who has the perfect family, has all the things that's in order. And I know some people can do that box. I couldn't do that box. That box was not for me. I thought that box was for me because I didn't grow up with a family or all of those things that I was aspiring to have. And that, that getting all of that showed me how that wasn't even the thing. All I was trying to get to was me. And when I got over those things and I realized that none of those things made me who I was, I was able to let them go. I was able to shed them and create something different for myself that made more sense, that was more simplistic and more in alignment with who I am. Not who I thought I needed to be in order to transcend this story that I had in my head for my entire childhood i love you too free body yoga i got your shirt i'm gonna put it on today um what is good for relationship stress well <laughs> no <laughs> um intimacy create intimacy more intimacy more ways to connect more different ways to connect so if you like cooking Y'all can cook together. If there's something you like to watch on TV, watch that. If there's a, if you like hiking, anything that can get you to, you don't have to specifically be alone, but your connection, you know, where you're connecting to each other and you're doing something. So I would say anything like that, that's going to bring you guys together, journaling your thoughts together. I like, these are all things I do with my partner. So I'm just saying these things. We do a lot of hikes. We do yoga, as y'all see on my page. We, um, he doesn't do my plants with me, but he does buy my plants. Ha, ha, ha. I do all the work, but he does buy them. So he notices that I have an affinity for plants. So when he's out at work, he always brings me a plant home at least once a week. There's all, I'm running out of space, Kenny. <laughs> but I love plants. So picking up on something that your partner enjoys and gently nudging them into it that creates a deeper intimacy as well um yeah just uh and, and listening that's not my strong suit i will admit that i'm a terrible listener that's something i'm working on but listening listening to people a lot of people i was talking to one of my friends yesterday and i realized that a lot of us don't really have um 
a good space where we have someone that listens to us, that hears us, that really hears us. That's not just listening to respond or listening so that we can shut the fuck up, but really paying us attention. Like really listening. Like, yeah, that's like something I aspire to be in my relationship, a good listener. I'm not very good at listening. Something I'm working on. Thank you, Jasiri. You know, you the one, girl. <laughs> um, does anybody else have anything else? I really enjoy um, when I do have an inspiration to talk because I really don't. I have more inspirations to move. <laughs> Actually, my, my body is like, move, move, move. You're welcome. Um, my body is like, move, move, move. Go, go, go. So talking is different. It's, it's different. And probably because I used to, in my pr previous life, I used to talk every day for eight hours. Literally, it, um, I did uh, sexual education, um, parenting classes, teen um, parenting class. I did so much education for our community that I was always talking. So I, I feel like this was the time of my life where I get to be silent. And I was talking for 20 years straight about sexual parts and diseases and bodies and um, kids and all of that so yeah just I've been quiet for the last six years and it's been really beautiful yes Michelle hey boo that's one of my old co-workers it's an art to listen and one of my favorite mamas yeah it's an art to listening it really is and um that's what I think I practice when I'm making not I think I know I practice when I'm making jewelry that's what's helping me build that for you know now it's helping me listen to myself because for a long time I didn't do that I didn't listen to myself and I'm so in a space where I listen to myself now I almost am ready to fight when somebody tells me that what I heard is not okay and I'm like no boo I, I did this before <laughs> and um <laughs> I did I used to take other people's advice over my internal advice all the time and it really got me in some fucked up situations um so now my supreme internal voice my internal voice is the loudest voice for me and i appreciate that because it really is um your intuition is really your your heart center it's really the space that is really guiding you to your fullness. And if I had been listening to that 20 years ago, God knows who I'd be. But I took the path that I was supposed to take, right? So I enjoyed the journey. And the journey has brought me here. Um, How do you forgive yourself? So, Simon, first... Go to, I would suggest, this is my suggestion. Go to why you committed the act that you committed. Why you needed to do what you did. What was the void that you were trying to fill? Where was, what was missing? What, what did you think you were going to lose or miss out on? Go there and then give that to yourself because somewhere there's a gap and you want it to be filled, but you don't know how to fill it. So you're looking outside of yourself in order to get that done. So feel, figure out what you think is missing because it's not, it's in there, you have it and figure out how you give it to yourself. What does that look like for Simon? How do I give this thing to myself so that I can heal this um, supposed gap or hole or missing link that I think is not here? 
Because that's usually why we're harming other people and ourselves is because we think we're going to miss out on something. We think we're not going to get something or we think something is better than what we have or what who we are or whatever. Um, and that's most likely not the truth. Everything we are is more than um, good enough for us. More than good enough for us. Thank you, Mercury. That's funny. That's your name. And you said that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. That was a complete affirmation for me because my actual um, Mercury is in Cancer. And I do have a hard time um, emoting um, speaking because I'm so emotional. So thank you for c affirming me and confirming that for me, um, that I, I need to speak more, even though I feel like I talk a lot <laughs> and I need to shut up. <laughs> um, oh, thanks, babe. I love you. Be safe out there in them streets. Y'all be nice to FedEx dr drivers. That's my boo out there delivering y'all packages 